I'm Gooch. And I am Eric. And here are the announcements for the week of uh, January 24th. Soccer tryouts have started! Boys and girls interested in joining, please come out to the turf field with your cleats, running shoes, and shoe guards after school this week. All right, Mr. Johnstone, is there any updates for boys basketball? Yeah, so eighth grade, we're still undefeated at 5-0. and uh, We beat uh, Boger, who was tied with us for first place. And we uh, have a couple more big games left this week. Uh, we got Orchard uh, today. Um, they're also undefeated, so it's going to be a big game, uh, deciding who's going to get the first seed in the playoffs. And then for sixth and seventh grade, we're still holding on for a playoff spot. we got to win two of our last three games to make playoffs. So we had a pretty good chance in there to make playoffs too. Uh, other thing is we got uh, vo volleyball and soccer getting ready to start. So if you're interested in playing after school sports for girls soccer and boys soccer, we want to have two teams this year. So girls soccer, please see me for more information. And boys soccer, your coach will be Mr. Beckham. Uh, see me immediately so we can get that taken care of. So we can have two full teams. And volleyball will start next week. All right, thank you. Antonio, what are you looking forward to for 2023? Summer break. All right. Oliver, what are you looking forward to for 2023? Um, meeting new people and learning new things. All right. Nunes, what are you looking forward to for 2023? To get taller and hug Miguel. Okay. Miguel, what are you looking forward to for 2023? To get taller. Okay. Ms. Sanchez, what are you looking forward to for 2023? I'm looking forward to finding a new hobby. Last year, I tried water, paint, or water painting. This year, I'm going to try acrylics. All right. Thank you. Thank you. William, what are you looking forward to in 2023? Um, making more money. All right. Maya, what are you looking forward to in 2023? My birthday. Okay. Jeremiah, what are you looking forward to in 2023? Um, more good grades. Good. Thompson, what are you doing for Lunar New Year's? Uh, I'm going to wear traditional clothing and then go to temples and pray. Okay, thank you. CD, what are you doing for Lunar New Year's? I'm, I'm trying to play basketball, dude. Okay. Bro, I stuttered. Yo, Aaron, what are you doing for Lunar New Year? Nothing. Do you said? Uh, that's awesome. Isaiah, what are you doing for Lunar New Year? Nothing. Nothing? No. What is this thing? Um, I don't know. Nothing. I nothing. 
Tommy, what are you doing for Lunar New Year? Staying at home. What's your name? Uh, Zach. <clears throat> what are you doing on Lunar New Year? Um, not having a party and staying at home playing game. A Pacific game. That I'm not going to tell you, people. Okay, thank you. Nathan. What are you doing for Lunar New Year? I'm going to wear some traditional clothing and eat a lot of food. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Jeremiah, what are you doing for Lunar New Year? Eating. Just eating? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Shut you down! Hell out of here! Shepherd's Hiski Club will have its first meeting on Thursday, the 26th at lunch in room D1. We hope to see you there. What African American do you admire the most? I'd probably have to say Jackie Robinson. He broke the color barrier for being the first African American to be allowed to play in the uh, Major League Baseball, even though they had Negro Leagues going on for a while. It was the first integration for uh, an African-American to play on a MLB team back in the 1950s. So he, I really look up to him and for everything that he had to endure when he was breaking the uh, color barrier in baseball. Okay, thank you. American you admire the most? The famous African-American that I admire the most is Maya Angelou. She's passed away, but she's a famous poet. Um, I just loved her, the way she spoke. She was so smart and calm and just a great speaker and great writer. So, Maya Angelou. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Who's the African-American you admire the most? Michelle Obama. Okay, thank you. Who's the African-American that you admire the most? Um, it's hard to pick, honestly, but I think someone I, who I admire uh, a lot is Billie Holiday. I think she was very brave um, and stood up for, or stood against a lot of contra like atrocities that were happening to black people at the time. Okay, thank you. African American, do you admire the most? Uh, one of uh, African American that I admire the most is Maya Angelou, and she's a famous poet. And I just really, her poems really inspire me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. African American that you admire the most. I'm Harriet Tubman for running the Underground Railroad and helping to slate three hundreds of slaves. Thank you. An Argentina shirt and ready to close. Nice. What did you get oh, for Christmas? Uh, the FIFA World Cup ball and FIFA 23 and new Nintendo Switch joy cons Nice. Got me up. For Christmas. Uh, I just got Pokemon cards. Nice. Just Henry. Shoes. Nice. What kind of shoes? Uh, I don't know. All right. What's for Christmas. Air Forces. Cool. What did you get for Christmas? Money. Barber clippers. Nice. Huh? Beans. That me up, fam. Ha! Psych. What did you get for Christmas, Caesar? Clothes and money. All right. What did you get for Christmas? I got. Oh, sweaters and games and get the Okay. Alright. What did you get for Christmas CD? I, I got a I got a basketball. Okay. Quick ad. Do you guys charge a Chromebook? Charge a Chromebook right now as we speak. Bonus question, what does my shirt say, two-pack or two-pack? Two-pack. Help me.
students, if you are interested in attending a different high school than one you are assigned to, check out the flyer posted in Miss White's Google Classroom called High School Transfer Options. See Miss Castaneda if you have any questions or need help. Hello, I'm going to be talking about the history of Martin Luther King Jr. and how he became a good person. He was born Michael King Jr. in 1929 with his parents. And his dad was very religious, so he learned about a lot about the Bible. And he graduated high school at the age of 15. Then he got married and had children. But around this time started the Montgomery bus boycott. One of the famous boycotts in history, I'd say. And Rosa Parks and him participated in it, and multiple people did, which ended up succeeding. And then he started participating in more stuff to help the civil rights movement keep going. And delivered his I Had a Dream speech in Washington, D.C., which ended up having the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act being established. But in 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. died by assassination. So thank you for watching this, and I'm going to play the I Have a Dream speech. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note. Hello to Doom and Netflix fans, I am Guillermo del Toro. This is my Pinocchio. To me, there's a valuable difference between stop motion as an art form and digital. Stop motion in the early days where you had the moiré and the flicker of fur and fabric, even the atmospheric dust on the sets, and the imperfection of it was sort of gorgeous to look at because it told you how the thing was done. And I really wanted this movie to land in a way that had the expressiveness and the material nature of a handmade piece of animation, an artisanal, beautiful exercise 
in carving, painting, sculpting, but it had the sophistication of movement that research on rigs and puppetry making have taken us to. In terms of scale, we use different size of puppets for different needs. This is our Pinocchio to interact with the cricket. In order for him to be the right size, we need the cricket and the shoulder of Pinocchio talking to him, whispering in his ear, uh, laying close to him. So we use this big Pinocchio, this small cricket, and then in certain shots, we use this small Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio is a tale that has lived through the centuries, a fable very close to my heart, and we are very sure that this incarnation is a particularly beautiful one. The book fair is this week in E9. It is open at brunch and lunch every day. No backpacks are allowed in. Hello Shepard, today we're at Poseidon's Temple in Cape Sinyon, the very southern tip of Greece, about an hour and a half south of Athens. This temple is made in honor of Poseidon, the god of the sea, which is perfect, because um, we are overlooking the ocean, you'll see in a minute. There's a beautiful breeze, it feels wonderful, I wish you could feel it. It's probably my favorite ruin that I've seen so far in Greece, because it's pretty complete if you look at the columns. Um, it was built about 3,000 years ago, and destroyed and then rebuilt, which seems to be a, a common theme for the ruins in Greece. Very beautiful though. Uh, I can imagine when it was at its height, overlooking the ocean. Um, Greece is very rocky and surrounded by ocean, so a lot of sailors. Most of I'm on Skaros, uh, rock, and Santorini in Greece. There's also a castle here. Um, if you look, it's very beautiful, but it, it also, you'll notice the islands form a rim of a volcano. There's about 6,000 islands in Greece. Um, Santorini is on a volcano. You see the rim of the volcano, it erupted several times. The last time was in the 1950s, it destroyed most of the island. It also erupted about 3,000 years ago and destroyed the island of Crete and the Minoan culture or civilization. So, yeah, very beautiful. Huh? Make sure to bring your Trojan tickets to the student store today and next week to enter the January raffle for this lovely blue tea wrap.
Thank you for listening to this week's announcement. I am Eric. And I'm Gib. And we are signing off.